listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, the place to learn about new technology and technological advances before they become mainstream. This podcast is sponsored by Ingram Micro's Imagine Next. It's not about the destination. It's about going someplace you never thought possible. Go to imaginenext.ingrammicro.com to find out more. Let's get into it. Welcome to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. I'm your host, Carrie Roberts, and my guest today is Jeff Yelton, the Vice President of Ingram Micro's U.S. Infrastructure and Specialty Technologies Organization. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Carrie. Thanks for having me. Jeff, I want to start off by chatting about you personally for a moment, as you have quite an impressive resume that spans over 32 years of experience working with manufacturers, resellers, independent software vendors, and distributors in the IT channel. And beyond your current role, which we just mentioned, you're also responsible for growing the U.S. cloud infrastructure as a service business at Ingram. And you previously served as the vice president and GM at Ingram Micro, working in the advanced solutions business unit with specific responsibilities for specialty technologies. And even before Ingram Micro, you served as the president of Wired Fox Technologies, the president of data capture and point of sales division at ScanSource. You were the executive vice president and CEO of Retalix North America, as well as a variety of roles at IBM. And then on top of all of that, you were also the owner of Kairos Corporation. So Jeff, I want to first congratulate you on the hard work and the leadership that you've put in throughout your career because you truly are at the edge of all the business trends here. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. So I want to start broad and then kind of drill down a little bit. What trends and technologies are you seeing dominate the market today? And where are the unsung opportunities for channel partners? Yeah, that's a great question, Carrie. Uh, So let me start. I'm going to start with the five big trends that I see out there. Uh, that are going to impact uh, the channel ecosystem over the next three to four years. And I'll list them in order of the ones that I think are going to have the biggest impact the the earliest to the channel. So I'll start out with the cloud. And I know this isn't a new one, and most people are probably already thinking about the cloud or have already started to invest in it. But the, the reason I put that as number one is we continue to see that as one of the largest growth areas in our company double-digit growth coming up on triple-digit growth uh, per year. It includes not only the applications in an application-as-a-service type environment, and think of, say, Salesforce or NetSuite, and I think that's what a lot of people think of when they think of cloud, but a huge portion of cloud is also the infrastructure that needs to be put in place to be able to support those applications, and also the application stack. So as the infrastructure is being put out there, whether it be a customer decides to go into a pure cloud environment or a hybrid cloud environment, they now have to start thinking about how they rewrite their applications to be cloud native. And that application stack provides a tremendous amount of opportunity for our partners uh, as we go forward. The second area is IoT. And you know, every time I bring up IoT, some partners roll their eyes and say, you know, I just can't quite get my arms around IoT but I would tell you that we need to continue to focus on that because we are seeing triple digit growth in that area also in our business. And I think what happened is at the beginning, most partners tried to think holistically about IoT. And really what you need to do is kind of focus in on use cases at your customers and try to solve um, those customers' problems uh, with an IoT type solution. And when partners kind of narrowed down and focused in like that, they were able to come up with solutions that they were be able to provide their partners and expand their business. So that's a huge area that I think partners need to make sure they focus on as they go forward in the future. Number three would be 5G. I think most people know that 5G is being rolled out in most of the major cities first, but it's very rapidly starting to spread out over the uh, uh, entire country. And while we saw the first use cases and applications being used on campuses, we're starting to see that spread out uh, now as the technology is spread out over um, all of the US. Number four is edge computing. The more you put in IoT, the more devices you have out there, the more data that you are starting to gather through 5G, the more you need edge computing devices out on the edge of the network so you take a little bit of that workload off of the cloud. 
And then number five, I would say, uh, would be extended reality. And when I talk about extended reality, it's both virtual reality and augmented reality. And, you know, Kerry, we could spend the whole time talking about any one of these. And while I think our partners should be thinking about these technologies and how they're going to impact their business in the future, I also think that most of our partners, mainly because of COVID, are looking about how they can drive immediate profit today. And to answer that question, I'd change my focus just a little bit depending on the general area that the partner is focused on. So let me give you an example. If I was a networking or data center uh, partner, I might make sure that I was focused on security because with all of the changes that have been going on right now because of COVID and the move to uh, work from home, security is a huge issue that most of their in, our partners end users are really focused on. And in fact, I would say that all of our partners should have a practice associated with that. And that's something that Ingram could uh, help our partners get into if that's not where they are today. The other area, and this would be the area that if I really wanted to drive profit today, if, if I was under stress from a profit point of view, I think I would focus on uh, unified communications because that's an area uh, where you could make money immediately right now today. So let's, you know, you named so many amazing things. And like you said, we were going to focus a little bit on the unified communications as a surface or UCC, as some people call it. What type of opportunity can it bring for today's channel partners? And can you maybe provide us some real world examples of what it solves for? Yeah, so the, the real world example I'd start with is the fact that we have just gone through the biggest worldwide pilot for unified communications that was driven by COVID. And, you know, Ingram is no different than any of the other partners out there or their end users in that we had to lift and shift about 20,000 of our employees from working in offices to working from home. And that pivot was uh, something that would just put a tremendous amount of uh, impact on our organization. And, and we did it, we made that transition, but it also gave us a good understanding of what uh, the end users or our partners are going through and what type of support services they needed to be able to implement unified communications. It's interesting because a few years ago, you were quoted stating that the ability to change and human nature is what's slowing us down the implementation of unified communications. I'm curious, do you still believe that today? And if so, what can we do about this? Well, first of all, it's interesting that you found that quote. I was trying to think about how far back that was that I said that. I think that was about two to three years ago that I said that. But I'll tell you that I did believe that right up until February when COVID hit. Because I think we were, most people are creatures of habit. And we were used to, you know, talking to people on the phone or talking to people through email. And then when COVID hit, it kind of forced everybody to go to video and uh, uh talking through video and communicating through vi video and collaborating on some of the technology that's out there today, whether it be Microsoft Teams or, or WebEx or BlueJeans or Zoom or whatever it happens to be. And um, so, yes, I did believe that up until February, but now I would say that, uh, that the pace and speed and adoption of unified communication has kind of gone off the charts and that video and collaboration is here to stay. And if I was a partner, I'd be adding UCC capabilities to my list of offerings uh, right now. And I think people need to understand that it's not just the endpoints associated with unified communications, but it's also all of that infrastructure that's associated with it to support that, uh, that uh, endpoint. As an example, whether it be Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx or BlueJeans or Zoom as the application, you also have to have, you know, a VPN, a VPN, a, a virtual private network, you know, Citrix or an RSA. You've got to have your bandwidth. You've got to make sure that you have the network infrastructure in place. So unified communications is a huge opportunity. And uh, it's something that I think is going to be with us for quite some time. Now, I want to shift gears just slightly here. Back in January, Ingram Micro expanded its efforts in South Carolina. Can you talk about what led to this expansion? Yeah, I, I th there were two things. One of them is uh, Ingram is always looking for new talent. And uh, Greenville, South Carolina and the area around Greenville, South Carolina 
is just packed with technical talent and distribution talent and warehousing talent. We have multiple colleges within a you know, 30 minute to an hour drive around this area. And it's a low cost area to live in. And so a lot of the, the, the people that are coming out of college or live in high cost areas around the country today are looking to make a move or if they're that college student, they wanna stay in this area. And so Ingram was really looking for that, uh, that talent in that low cost area. They were also looking for an area that was located near the population hubs. And you know, the majority of the population in the US is along the East Coast. And Greenville sits kind of right in the middle of that population hub. And then we also have, this area also have, has excellent access to uh, transportation whether it's trucking or air freight and seaport. So that's the first reason that Ingram decided to expand here. The second one is that we had made an acquisition of a company called NetX a few years ago that was located here in Greenville, and they've just had phenomenal growth. And so we needed to expand their operations. So the combination of those two areas is why we made such a big investment in this area. Yeah, and you had just mentioned that Ingram Micro acquired NetX as part of the expansion in South Carolina. What has NetX brought to Ingram Micro's UCC offering? So I, th I think there were three areas. One of them is they had deep, deep uh, technical talent. And the reason they had that talent is because they built a piece of software that automates the ordering and the provisioning and the RMA or the returns of, uh, I mean, return processes of people in that unified communication space. And so it's the talent, the technical talent. It was also that software platform that they had developed, but it was also just the general expertise around unified communications that they had. They had some of the, the deepest technical talent that we saw out in the, uh, in the industry. And I do wanna talk just a little bit about that software. We call it Maverick, that provisioning software. Uh, it's a platform that allows the partners to be able to be in the business today and to easily get into it without having all of that infrastructure. So if I'm a partner and I believe that unified communications is an opportunity for me in my space that I operate in, they have the ability to get up to speed very quickly to be able to provide that provisioning, to provide those ordering tools, to be, be able to provide the maintenance and the repair on unified communications products without having to make all of the investment today. And if I was a partner that was already in it, it's a way for our partners to be able to shift some of their cost structure to a lower cost structure over at NetX and be able to take the dollars that they were investing in all of that provisioning services and invest them in some of those technologies that I talked about earlier. And you're referring to the five you mentioned as far as cloud, IoT, 5G, edge computing, and VR and AR, correct? Exactly. Where do you see the most opportunity for channel partners, especially within the next year? It's a bit of an overused term, but digital transformation is happening at the end user environment. And that end user digital transformation, driven by the five technologies that I talked about earlier, are causing massive changes at the end user level. And those changes are providing opportunities for our partners to be able to assist their customers in that transformation and in the changes that they're going through, whether it be at the application level or at, whether it be at the infrastructure level to be able to support the new requirements that their end user customers are requiring. And, to be successful long-term, you're gonna to have to at least be able to discuss these technologies, because if you're not able to discuss these technologies that are coming or this digital transformation that's impacting their end user customers, then you're gonna lose that narrative with your customer and the customer is gonna to go to another partner that is able to discuss these new technologies. And so I think that's something that Ingram has the capability to help our partners with, is to help them discuss these new technologies help them explain to their end user customer how it's going to impact their businesses and help them understand how they're gonna be able to get a return on investment as they invest in these new technologies as they go forward. So the key thing is you don't have to be an expert in all these technologies. I think that as long as you will lean on Ingram to let, you, let us help you 
uh, in those conversations, you'll be successful as we move forward. If people have questions about anything we talked about, or maybe they want to work with Ingram to help them with what you're referring to, where is the best place to do that and to ask questions? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind when you ask that question is um, our Ingram One uh, event. Um, that was our partner event that we would have uh, once a year. But because of COVID, we're going to have to have it um, in a, uh, we're not going to be, have it, be able to have it in person. It's going to have to be in, a, um, in, in the cloud to be able to provide that. It's on November 4th and 5th. And for any partners um, or vendors that want to be a part of that, uh, they can go to events dot ingrammicro.com or another area if you want a, a valuable site if you want to find out about um, anything associated with Ingram is imagine next dot ingrammicro.com and then always if you have a Ingram Micro rep you can uh, reach out to them and they'll be able to help you or if you're a Trustex partner or an SMB Alliance partner or part of that community you can always engage there and find out uh, about anything that we've talked about here today. Well, thank you so much, Jeff, for sharing your expertise and knowledge with us today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Carrie. I appreciate it. And um, I hope to talk to you again soon. If you like this episode or have a question, join the discussion on Twitter at Ingram Texel with the hashtag B2B Tech Talk. Thank you for tuning in and subscribing to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. You've been listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, hosted by Carrie Roberts. This episode was sponsored by Ingram Micro's Imagine Next. B2B Tech Talk is a joint production with Sweetfish Media and Ingram Micro. Ingram Micro production handled by Laura Burton and Christine Fan. To not miss an episode, subscribe today on your favorite podcast platform.